Bed and breakfast. But no roof. By Barry Mahoney. Well, it's holiday time again and the big getaway is about to begin in most countries. Those of us who live in Spain and the Canary Islands will hardly be surprised to read that Spain and the USA are jointly the second most popular countries for tourists to visit in the world, with 75.6 million visitors each. Figures show Spain and the USA just behind France, which had 82.6 million visitors. Well, that's enough of statistics for now. With all this holiday travel, and particularly during the peak holiday season, finding sufficient accommodation for all manner of guests with different budgets can be a problem. In the Canary Islands, for instance, it used to be a simple matter of recommending a tried and trusted hotel for visiting friends. Yet this is currently becoming more of a problem, with most hotels at full capacity for much of the year. Whilst innovative ideas such as Airbnb have helped to ease this load, this form of accommodation is increasingly being eyed with suspicion, especially by tourism officials who are concerned about wide variations in the quality of such accommodation, as well as tax and local authority officials who are concerned that taxes are not being paid. Well, I was intrigued to hear about one innovative offering from Airbnb on the deliciously unconventional island of Ibiza. Since accommodation on the island is in short supply and prices have increased to unrealistic levels, some locals are offering a bunk bed on their balconies for just 50 euros a night. One such hostel offers up to nine bunk beds on a small balcony. Guests have to use the bathroom and living room although, understandably, this area is heavily monitored with a security camera. If this isn't quite up to usual standards, guests can opt to stay in a wooden shack, and delivery vans converted into caravanettes, although these alternatives are more expensive and €90 Euros per night, but they do have the added advantage of a roof. It's probably worth paying extra for protection during sudden storms or a mosquito attack, Intending guests might find it useful to know that Ibiza is an all-day party island where quality soundproofing could be quite useful, particularly at night. Now, one enterprising businessman in Spain recently bought an old plane from a bankrupt airline with a view to converting it into premium accommodation for tourists. I'm often told how comfortable planes are to sleep in during a long-haul flight, so logic tells me they could make comfortable nighttime accommodation on the ground too. This form of holiday accommodation could well appeal to aviation fanatics and those seeking something different. Personally, once I've arrived at my destination and left the plane, the last thing I would want to do is to spend my holiday in one. Still, it takes all sorts. This businessman may well be on to something big, since there are several converted planes around the world that have been successfully converted into hotels, bars, restaurants, homes and even McDonald's. There is one plane in Georgia that's been converted into a kindergarten, which will no doubt appeal to aspiring pilots of the younger generation. In New Zealand, one 1950s Bristol freighter twin-engine aircraft that were used in the Vietnam War has been converted into a motel, although guests do have to pay extra to sleep in the cockpit. Another aeroplane in the Netherlands has been converted into a romantic getaway with all those holiday essentials, which includes a spa, jacuzzi, infrared sauna, minibar and three flat-screen televisions. I am curious to know what happens in an infrared sauna. Personally, I think I'll give these alternatives a miss, since I'm desperate to stay in one of the new virtual reality hotels with accommodation that adjusts to the specific needs of individual guests. Such as the prototype recently demonstrated at Madrid's tourism fair, but that's a story for another time. Finally, if you do find yourself sleeping in unusual holiday accommodation, such as a, a garage, a kennel, 
or maybe a disused swimming pool, maybe a little more research is needed next time. You have been listening to Bed and Breakfast But No Roof, which is part of the Letters from the Atlantic series by Barry Mahoney. You can find out more about me, my books, podcasts, blogs, by going to my website, which is www.barrymahoney.com. And thank you for listening.